I really don't have any funding to do this. It's just kind of, um, I've used some modest fellowship funds and also some money out of my own pocket. But the reason I've done it is because I think it is um, an important question that, as far as I know, hasn't been addressed yet. So, if we go back to the title slide. Okay. Just to give you a brief outline about what it is I'll be talking about, I'll start by showing data that we've already seen today in some of the previous talks about genetic variation of tamarics in Asia versus here in North America. I'll show molecular genetic data um, that I generated in tamarics at Dewey Bridge, which is a Dirabda release site that Levi just finished talking about. And then I'll talk about where I think this stuff could go, specifically in the Virgin River drainage and perhaps even beyond. So this is a figure we've seen today, I think, well, earlier today in, in Jonathan's talk and yesterday as well. Um, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but we do know there are at least two species that hybridize extensively here in North America, but not in their native habitat. So just, again, to reiterate, Chinensis is native to China, Mongolia, and Japan, while Ramosissima is widespread in eastern Turkey, Korea, and invasive populations here in North America tend to be hybrid swarms. So genetic recombinants between these two Asiatic populations. And Jonathan mentioned there's additional data. So in this previous figure, this was single locus um, sequences from a nuclear intron. And this is the data from the whole genome. Um, these are, uh, it, this is a principal coordinates plot showing um, AFLP profiles, so amplified fragment length polymorphisms. It's, just a way to survey the entire genome for variation. And you can see there were clear differences between the two Asiatic species and everything pretty much in the Uni United States invasion, um, at least in the areas they sampled, was somewhere in between these two Asiatic types. And so there's a lot of genetic recombination. And really what's here in North America is something different than what is in Asia. So this brings me to my research questions. First, what are the genetic relationships among Tamarix individuals at Dewey Bridge and in the Virgin River Gorge? And second, are patterns of Dirabda herbivory associated with genetic variation in Tamarix? This is the release site at Dewey Bridge. It's just a Google Earth image, um, so I don't know exactly when it was taken, probably sometime before beetle introduction and before um, the bridge, I guess, apparently burned a few years ago, unfortunately. When I came to this site, it was on the field trip for the conference a few years ago. It would have been in 2007. And I noticed that in this patch, where the Dirabda beetle had moved through, there were some individuals that were apparently keyed in on by the beetles and other individuals that were avoided. And it formed a mosaic of what appeared to be susceptible and resistant tamarics. This is what it looked like inside of the patch. So you can see the beetle completely defoliated this individual right here, but then right next to it, this guy, you know, they started kind of at the tips, and, and um, a lot of times the branches were even interlocking, but for the most part, this one was avoided. Like they started, wasn't quite right, and so maybe they moved on. So again, are there susceptible and resistant genotypes? 
So I went to this site in 2007. Um, it's about 30 miles upstream of Moab, Utah, on the Colorado River. Again, so it was clear that there were differential patterns of herbivory. I just went through and took a random sample of 20 tamarics that had been defoliated and then 20 that had been avoided. So I'll just kind of jump to my results. What I'm presenting is really a preliminary data set from DNA microsatellites. I used five loci and 40 individuals from the Dewey Bridge population. And for those of you that don't know about microsatellites, basically it's a section of highly repetitive DNA. And this is, for example, this would be one locus and sequences from, say, four individuals. There is length polymorphism. So you can see allele one has four fewer, well, two, two fewer TC repeats than allele two, and then so forth. And so what I'm measuring are, are the lengths of these sections of DNA. They're very rapidly evolving and very useful for population level analysis for that reason. Now, in addition to these 40 individuals, John Gaskin sent me DNA from what we could call pure Tamarix ramosissima anchinensis. They were collected in their native habitat. And I use these as reference samples to determine what is the genetic composition in the Dewey Bridge population. Early results confirm the repeatability of John Gaskin's microsatellite protocol and the hybrid status of Tamarix where I sampled on the Colorado River. And here are some results. I calculated RST, which is essentially an, an FST analog for microsatellite data that accounts for their mode of mutation. But it's a measure of population structure. So values range from 0 up to 1. 0 means that two populations are virtually identical, whereas values closer to 1 mean that they're very different. So just to walk you through this a little bit, on this side of the matrix, I have p-values associated with the RST values here. And so it shows all pairwise comparisons between defoliated and non-defoliated individuals at Dewey Bridge, but then also the two Asian species. And so these results indicate that there was no genetic difference between the defoliated and non-defoliated individuals at Dewey Bridge. Compare that with a value of 0.3, which I think is pretty low for two species on either side of a continent. Um, and clearly, what was at Dewey Bridge was very different from the two Asiatic species. This is a UPGM, a dendrogram. Essentially, it's a way to assess evolutionary relationships among, or just genetic similarity among sample populations. On this axis, I have genetic distance. Um, you can see there was virtually no difference between defoliated and non-defoliated individuals. Um, so the, this is a bootstrap value. Basically, 100, and it uses an algorithm to assign individuals to a group and show similarity between groups. Um, these two groups formed a cohesive unit 100% of the time out of the 10,000 replicates. And these results do indicate there may be a slight affinity towards Ramosissima in the Dewey Bridge population.